Greetings YouTube, time for another bargain video. We're starting out with the Practical Guide to Dragon Riding, which is from TSR and deals with the Dragon Lance setting. And I discovered there's an entire series of these about dragons and stuff. I didn't know there were as many of these as there are, so I may start hunting them down at some point. The Nature Explorer's Scrapbook, that's from my wife. Kids and Critters RPG Trilogy. Witches and Magic Makers. Um, pick that up cheap. Gonna like see if it's any good. I may keep it. I may pass it on. Um, Overflight, which is a, an adventure for. Uh, what is it for? Role playing game of Kaleidoscopic Journeys. I don't know. It was free. Um, I'll give it a look and see if it's any decent. It's decent. Sovereign Stones, the Tan, which is a race. Uh, a species book. Um, Rollmaster's Changeling Companion. The Pocket Reference Guide, which is one of the best gifts you can conceivably give to anyone. And I picked this up for a buck at a yard sale, which is what I bought it for, a potential gift. Um, Fairy Meat. Warwick uh, Castle, which has got some nice illustrations and floor plans and such. Um, and a graphic novel, The Unmen, Children of Paradox. A fantastically dark world, so we'll we'll see how dark that is. I picked that up at an antique shop because sometimes you find things like this at antique shops. It was only five bucks. So I'm like, I'll give it a read. Art style is kind of interesting. Um, so on to more books. And I picked up some copies of Playboy from the 1960s. I got five issues. Interestingly, the years are not on the covers at this point. Just the month. This one is to 61, so I'm assuming they're all in the roughly the same zone because they're all the same price. They're all 60 cents. Um, so that'll be interesting. Venomous, how Earth's deadliest creatures mastered biochemistry. Squarriors, which is a, a post-apocalyptic setting where animals have become fully sapient and uh, semi-humanoid. A uh, book about Georgia O'Keeffe for my wife. Two issues of a Deathlock comic because um, I like Deathlock. Um, and Halcyon, which is about what happens when the good guys win. Um, and kind of the opposite of the Miller book, which I'm now spacing on, which was about when the wanted, the Miller book wanted, not the movie, but the, the book, what happens when the bad guys win. And then we have some art cards, um, which are for, actually for babies, so like this is a seahorse. This is a an octopus. My wife liked the graphics, so we picked them up. They were a dollar, um, so she may use them for some craft project. Um, on to digital media. We have a film called Upside Down, which is science fiction. We have Mary Poppins, the two-disc set. Shaolin, uh, Masters of Shaolin, which is three different films, which looks like it'll be you know, wushu fun. Watchmen, the director's cut. I saw something online recently, a YouTube video, where someone was extolling the virtues of the director's cut of this over the theatrical cut. So I picked it up a copy at the local pawn shop. Uh, Stranded, which is again a science fiction film about, about uh, both being stranded on the moon and alien invasions. Becoming Julia, which is kind of a rom-com thing. Night of the Creeps, a film I have not seen in decades. I picked it up at Bull Moose for eight bucks in the Blu-ray, and it's got a commentary. Um, the Relic, which is a film that is still visually stunning, and I think it holds up pretty solid. I really do, other than the fact that there are no cell phones in the film. Um, and the commentary track is quite good. The Lost Skeleton Returns Again, which is a parody of 1950s era monster movies. And it is just wonderful. It really is. There are other, other films, There's a, this is a sequel, and there are other films in the, by this same group that are all parodying like the, the, the trail of the screaming forehead. I gotta, get, I gotta get the rest of these. What We Do in the Shadows, uh, for my wife wanted to see that, and it was cute. I might watch that again. Um, some Vintage Mickey Mouse, which I paid a dollar for. A lot of these things say like two bucks on the cover, and I paid half that for them. Um, the Beloved Rogue, which is a uh, an old school history of cinema thing, which I picked up. 
Gremlins 2 and Gremlins. Now, the Gremlins commentary track was awesome. I already had this film on DVD. That'll get donated. And I didn't have Gremlins 2. And the, I like the next day after having watched this, I stumbled on this at Bull Moose. And I'm like, hey, okay, I'll pick it up. I want to I want to see it. People say online say that the commentary track of this one is not as good as the Gremlins one. And I watched that there's two commentary tracks on here. And I watched the one with the actors and the director. Interestingly, they were not in the same conversation. So like the two main actors were talking they were together doing their commentary and then the director was doing his commentary but they were not in the same room ever. They were, it was very strange. Um, we have a cute little backpack which has a camping theme which my wife found adorable. Um, she, we picked it up at a thrift shop for three bucks. We got this. This is just a resin totem pole. It's uh, Canadian, but it's the top of the totem pole is a frog and it just made me smile. I picked that up at an estate sale along with this, which I think this handle is Bakelite and the sound was good. So I liked it. We have this, which is a, let me get that turned around. There we go. Dansk paperweight and it has a wonderful feel. This is a genius. It just, it just you like you want to hold it. You really do. I picked that up at an antique shop. We have a severely over-engineered folding bottle opener from back when cans didn't have pull tabs. But this is still a cap lift. Um, this is German, but and it's just really over-engineered. And I saw it and it was it was cheap. And I'm like, look, I gotta own that. It just it, it just makes me smile. I got a bag of runes which I picked up at a buy the pound play so I paid almost nothing for these like 50 cents I already have my own set so I may use these for some kind of craft project maybe like jewelry or out of them or something like that it'd be making a funky clock who knows um, then we have this piece here which is a hand turned piece of artwork and I picked it up at the when I was at the thrift shop and I'm like this this guy knew what he was doing so I did a quick Google search and found out that he is a nationally recognized Carver, and I think he's also dead. So I picked this up and add, I'll add it to my collection. And I have space for it in my collection. Um, we have these two carved shoes, or a pair of, of carved wooden shoes. And it was four bucks for this pair. They don't fit me, they don't fit my wife, they're way too big. But they're just so beautifully done. The carving is just so beautiful. I may just display these on a wall or something. But they're just so pretty. I'm just like, wow, this guy knew what he was doing. Um, we have a couple of miniatures I picked up at a gaming store. This is a six-limbed gorilla. Sapient, obviously, because he's using weapons. And this guy is also six-limb. But he's a little more primitive and uh, uh, less intelligent looking. No weapons, just rah, rah, rah scream, bite, chomp, that kind of thing. But I loves me some gorilla figures and six limbs are cool. Now these two were actually not what you call great deals. They were a bucket piece. But it's interesting that they are my favorite shape dice, 12 sided, but they have four Roman numerals that go one through four and they have that, have that on them three times, which means these are D4s. D4s that you can actually pick up with your hands. D4s that aren't caltrops. So yeah, real happy to find these things. This was a cool find. I'm kind of sad I didn't buy more of them. <laughs> if I go back and they still have some, um, I think I may do that. Alrighty, next is going to be a bunch of tools. We have quite a few tools in this in this video, and I believe if I can remember, I will tack on a picture of a bargain that we picked up at uh, Target's after Halloween sale, which is on my porch at the moment. We have this web belt style strap. I've never used a strap with this type of buckle before. It was two bucks. I'm like, I'm gonna give it a try. I'm probably just throw it in my trunk or something. Um, but I'll see how I like it. This box right here, which I think may have been modified. I think it was a type of, it, it has a nice lock and everything, but this hinge is not the original. Uh, but this box itself is worth about eight bucks, I figure. But it came full of Forstner bits. Now, these are going to need to be touched up as far as sharpness is concerned. 
but it's an entire box of Forstner bits, and I paid eight bucks for it. Anybody that knows anything about buying Forstner bits knows this is a good score. We'll leave that open. Uh, this is a pair of kids' uh, chucks. I got them for the swivels. I bought them at a buy the pound place, so I'll just strip off the handles and I'll reuse the swivels. This is a wrench set, which uh, is designed with one end being the classic alligator style wrench designed for oddly shaped nuts. And then we have hex style wrench on this end. So this is old enough to have been in a transitionary period before hex heads became ubiquitous. So I got to do some research on this and see if I can figure out who made it and what year it was produced. But I picked this up at, at a buy the pound place, so I bought it for the cost of the metal. So that was kind of cool. And I got this there, there as well. And this is a, a Wiss set of shears. But I didn't even know Wiss made things in the U.S. This is made in New York, New, uh, Newark, New Jersey. So, yeah. Uh, that Again, I'll need to sharpen it up a bit and probably make an adjustment to that. The, the anvil on this, but cool. Um, this is a antique kind of homemade handle. This is a obviously cut down and then a person gra engraved, uh, carved in this check. And the, like the last thing I really need in the world is another hammer, but it's it was pretty and I'm like, <sighs> I want the pretty hammer. So I bought the pretty hammer. Uh, these are letter stamps. My wife needed these for a project and we found them at a, an estate sale for 15 bucks and they're vintage. In nice shape and they come in their own carrying case so i'm like all right 15 bucks you know i'm not going to be able to get ones of this quality for that price anyplace else so yeah cool i have a craftsman uh ratchet set i realized when i was in the shop down the shop one day i don't have a ratchet down there all my ratchets are up here in the office so i got this for the office for downstairs and i paid eight bucks for that at a uh, yard sale as well as a quarter inch uh angled die grinder for five dollars still sealed that's a good deal even if it is a husky it's still a good deal i got this funky uh, light for 250 at bed bath and beyond i want to see how that works we have this weird knife apparently it's some kind of kitchen thing i'm not sure i have not tried it yet uh, it's called the samurai 360 uh so i'll <laughs> give that a shot and see how well it works we have this folding knife, which is Japanese, and it's from the Lion Company. And there is an actual lion. It's, it's a clear, clear handle. And I thought that was kind of cool. And I like the classic profile. And when this folds up, this goes flat along the handle, which is also cool. Then we have two fixed blade knives here. Um, this is a Gerber. I mean, this is a, a, a SOG, rather. I'd never seen this model. I picked it up for eight bucks at, at an antique shop. It needs to be sharpened, but I like the length. The sheath is pretty good quality in its design, so you could cut line with it when it's when it's in the sheath position safely without harming yourself. And then we have this Puko, which is uh, Bruce Leto, and it is vintage and no longer produced. And I got it for fifteen bucks, and it's worth significantly more than 15 bucks. I'm going to keep it because I, I like knives and the sheath's in excellent conditions, has a plastic liner and it's the guy selling it to me just didn't know what he had flat out. He's like, oh, it's kind of plain. I'll say, how about 15 bucks? Okay, I'll pay 15 bucks for that. And then we have this machete. Now I can't figure out what this is. I can find no marks on the blade itself. There is a number two stamped here. I think this is Bakelite, but I'm not positive. And it's got five copper rivets in the handle. And you just don't see that kind of thing anymore. And it's got a nice thick blade. It needs to be sharpened. Um, got a nice heft to it. And I paid $3 for this at an estate sale. And it's just, I'm just like, this is a cool looking blade. I need to figure some more about it. This. Now I'm not going to do anything other, other than make the edge usable. I'm not going to touch the spray paint that was put on here or anything like this. I'm not going to touch the patina on this at all. Um, but if anybody knows about anything about machetes that might have had this style handle, five rivets, that's just, it's just, I'm like, maybe it's handmade. I'm not positive, but I can't figure out why it would have a, 
a number two stamped here unless the person made more than one of them. Uh, but it's really interesting and it's got a and it just has a nice vibe to it. I like it. Uh, okay, we got one more section of tools today. We have this large wrench. I can't find any markings on it, which makes me think it was probably a purpose built accessory to a larger piece of equipment like it came with a a large piece of farming equipment because this was purchased at an estate sale where the guy owned like 20 real tractors antique tractors and he had all kinds of wrenches and stuff and this was found in a barn with a leaky ceiling it was just rain was dripping down on us on the day that we were there um it wasn't the place was falling apart and was like enter at your own risk and there was a reason there was a sign that said that um but I, I saw it and I really like the shape. It's a good, it's a good scale. Um, it makes an awesome impact weapon, and I just happen to like the design. And that was five bucks, so good deal. And then we have these files here, and this hole, hole drill, uh, hole cutter. Now this is a uh, U.S. manufactured vintage hole cutter, and. I have no idea what that kind of thing is worth. I know that a cold cutter that size is not going to be cheap in, in, in the modern era. Um, but I got that hole cutter and all of these files and rasps. There's two rasps in here and the rest are all files. And I got triangular files. I got flat files. I got tapered files. I got half rounds. I got rounds. I got squares. And I got all of this stuff for $3. So that's a pretty dear garden darn good deal. Now I just got to figure out how to get all this crap in my basement because the guy, the guy's like, here's a paper bag. Fill the paper bag up for three bucks. Putting these files into a paper bag was not a good idea, but I only, I scrolled, struggled through because I got them for three bucks. Now, some of these are in nice enough shape that I'm going to use them as files. Some are not, but there's a couple of these in here that I think like for this one, maybe something like this, I could turn into the tip of a of a throwing dart or something. You know what I mean? Put that on a shaft or something? That would be kind of cool. It would be really easy to get that to be sure. And it's already hardened. Um, I probably might use this one. This one's in crappier shape. That one's in nicer shape. But the point is, I got a whole lot of files, so my file needs are covered for the foreseeable future. And uh, these rasps like this can be useful if you need to work uh, drywall or, or, or wood. And this is a half round. Is this a half round or is this a square one? Oh, that's a square one. This is a square one. This is a half round. Um, but yeah, that's a heck of a deal, man, for $3. So I was quite happy with that. They, none of, only one of them's got a handle, but it's not hard to get, get handles or just make handles. You just take some uh, round stock and cut up some few lengths and you drill a few holes in them. Boonk! Handles. Not hard to do that. And you can buy round stock at the hardware store real cheap. It even comes in nice, convenient three-foot lengths. So there you go, folks. This has been the latest bargain video, and I will try to remember to add the Chris the Halloween decoration we got at Target at, on at their after holiday sale.